when you think about snails, what comes to mind is the mucus-like secretion they produce that can easily repulse or even make one cringe at the thought of coming into contact with these shelled animals. Though considered one of the most invasive pests that can cause agricultural or even environmental damage wherever they exist, snails and their slime have proven over time to be useful in matter nutrition and as a health management product. Snails and their slime have been used over the years. And here at JQUAT, experts are currently exploring its other health benefits, especially in treating coughs. Here at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kiambu County, where these animals have found a safe haven, they are currently being bred for different purposes. And now, in collaboration with experts from further afield, under the guidance of Food Drug Administration FDA, the institution is in the process of manufacturing cough syrup from slime harvested from these snails, a process that many may consider far-fetched. However, as explained by the institution's researcher on non-conventional farming, Dr. Paul Kinoti, snail slime has curative properties that can treat coughs, especially among children under the age of five. The genesis of use of uh, snail slime or mucus as a health uh, management uh, product emanated way back in 19th century. During this time, the Romans and the Greeks were using it to treat ulcers. It was later found that use of snail slime can also have an effect on the breathing mechanism, that is the trachea. In fact, in a country like Ghana, you'll find that they normally consume what we call blue blood or uh, blue liquid. This blue liquid is a mixture of blood and the slime. And it's normally used for children instead of what we call the seven seas. To develop this syrup, following trials conducted in Ghana, where researchers noted a drop in cough cases among children who consumed snail meat and even drank the snail's blue blood mixed with the slime, the researchers say the African giant land snail is more potent in the manufacture of the syrup compared to other species. A trial has been made in uh, those labs of uh, Mulawan and they found that indeed it can be able to be developed into a cough syrup. Now the issue was which is the most dependable species and we found that from our own trials that the giant African land snail, the one now you can see, also referred to as fulica, uh, Achatina fulica, tend to have a highly concentrated mucus, which now can have those benefits, which now can be translated into a syrup. To achieve the desired efficacy level, the slime is mixed with other ingredients, as explained by Dr. Kinoti. Through various research uh, steps, it was found that if you can upscale the snail slime by adding two other ingredients, that is the aloe vera, and the honey, and I'm talking about the natural bee honey, cases of coughs were actually reduced. So what was remaining is now to develop a product that is branded, goes through the normal protocol, and now it is offered for people to consume. We have identified so far three major key ingredients in terms of percentage. 60% of that cough syrup will constitute what we call the snail slime. 20% of the remaining 40% will be the aloe vera extract because aloe vera has been used severally to also deal with the issues to do with the respiratory and ulcers and all that. And finally, 10% of the remaining 20% shall be used to, shall be the honey. The other ingredients are the other an antidotes that are normally added. Using the right snail species to facilitate extraction of the slime is key in the success of the miracle product set to lower the cost of treating coughs, especially among children. There are two types of snail species which include the giant African land snail, also known scientifically as Achatina folica, and the European species also referred to as Helix aspartae. In terms of the potency, the Achatina folica probably because of the environment in which they grow, tend to have higher quality slime that produce the best product that could be used now for the best 
cough syrup. From the research that is ongoing, the role of JK Watt is now because they have identified that this giant African land snail carries the secret towards production. And that's why you see major uh, studies have been done in Ghana, which is Africa, were actually based on this type of snail. So our work is to identify the snails, get the right ecotype, because they are different subspecies of the same giant African land snail. And then from this ecotype, now we can multiply within our environmental conditions that favor these snails, produce the slime, and then send the slime to Italy. Different species of snails have been linked with diseases like meningitis. They have been proven to transmit a parasitic roundworm whose lava, when ingested through contaminated water or vegetables, or even when undercooked, can cause damage to the nervous system or worst death. Insect bite. I can confidently say no. Why? Because the conditions that favor the parasite to thrive so that now the snail become a vector must be aquatic or semi-aquatic. In fact, one of the snails that could be considered very effective in terms of transmission of bilharzia and also those parasites that can cause those problems in the brain is the golden apple snail. These are small snails that are normally common in Mwea, especially uh, during the month of November, December, and those snails are not edible and they are considered potential for bilharzia and also what you are calling as meninges, something like that. The extraction of the slime is perhaps regarded as the crucial part of breeding these animals. As required by the World Health Organization, it has to be done in a humane way without killing the animal. The process as explained by the researcher can be employed using an irritation method, considering that snails produce slime through irritation or when they are mobile. Through fractional distillation method, we are able to separate the citric acid from the slime. That is the basis of the lab work. So for every 10 seconds, you repeat. And it will continue to ooze until finally it's, 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 it's finished. And you can do it for 5 to 10 minutes, you'll have gotten sufficient. Remember, every snail produces about four meals, so it's not a lot. So once you have an average of four meals per snail, then that's more than enough for that period. Then again, after. The extraction can also be done using a machine. And after the procedure using citric acid, the snails are supposed to be washed with clean, fresh water to wash off the acid in order to relieve it of the stress and help them recover. The slime can be harvested at least twice a day and four times a month. After extraction, experts advise that they are allowed to recover for seven days before another extraction is done. When it comes to storage, this precious commodity can either be frozen, dried, or preserved using potassium sorbate. One is to freeze. If you keep snail slime under zero degrees, then it can last even for six months. Two, you can dry it in by creating the dry form. In fact, this is the highly recommended method for uh, exporting to, to the Italians. So when you dry it, uh, they can easily be able to hydrate it by adding the equivalent of what was lost. They need to understand how much potassium sorbate, where do they get this potassium sorbate, how pure, pure it is, because what is important in uh, slime is the microbiological value. So if the bacterial count is too high, the snail slime is graded low. What we are advising farmer is to get a small fridge. If they don't have, we can be able to provide them at a fee. Get like a small fridge. Once you harvest your slime, put it in a freezer. Then when you are transporting it, provided it's not more than 24 hours, it's okay. Snail farming, as explained by Dr. Kinoti, is slowly gaining traction in the country, creating demand in the untapped market, said to be a game changer in the manufacture of the cough syrup. However, the farming has to be done in a manner that favors their growth. To ensure those who venture into this business are well equipped with the necessary skills required, 
they often have to undergo a three-day training at the institution before seeking for permit from the Kenya Wildlife Service to rear the animals. Snails are cold-blooded animals. However, through research and technology, we have come to identify mitigation factors, such that a farmer in Isiolo, a farmer in Malindi, a farmer in uh, Ukambani or those places of Yata, or even Garissa, can be able to comfortably farm snail. How? Because for you to mitigate against adverse weather condition, there are things that they can be able to introduce. One, they can be able to grow some plants around that creates a microclimate. Two, they can have a structure of a shade house that effectively reduces the temperature. And more importantly, you could also introduce misters so that when it is very hot, the mist starts to operate and the temperature and the humidity goes down. Those are the major factors that influences snail farming. The cold-blooded animals mainly feed on vegetables and fruits, which Dr. Kinoti says can easily be sourced from the market or kitchen waste. Ancient Greece and Romans studied properties of the snail and found that its mucus was packed with health benefits like hydration and regeneration of the skin, healing of skin diseases, wounds and pulmonary diseases among other health benefits. Like I mentioned, this is a skin care product, very effective against many skin problems, apart from beauty. If I have to mention, it is very much effective, tested and proven against acne, black spot, very effective on wounds. It has also been shown to be very much uh, magnificent in terms of eczema control and of course the ringworms, especially for kids. And you don't need also to mention, since it is zinc oxide fortified, it's also considered a good sunscreen of up to 30 SPF, sun protection factor. This has been proven through our standard uh, program. And in fact, most of the people who have albino or skin problems tend to prefer this product. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, it's beautiful. If you apply to it, as you can see, uh, although men uh, don't like me, but you can see my skin is moist, tender, and soft. Mm -hmm. That's um, a, a clear indication that it's also good for moisturizing the skin, mm -hmm. softening it, and also making you look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Snail skincare remains one of the beauty trends in the country. However, an analysis by experts at JQUART of some of the products that have penetrated the local market indicate that unsuspecting buyers do not get value for their money and are meant to believe that the products contain a high amount of snail clam, yet they do not. When we did our analysis to find the concentration of the slime, I am sorry to report it was less than 2%. Meaning you will need four bottles or even five of what you find in the market to meet the same uh, requirements that will be provided by what we have. Because ours is about 60 to 70 percent pure slime. So the value for the money is actually obtained if you are to use what you have. I don't want to talk about mostly the competitors, but what I can say is that if you do the analysis, the difference is like day and night. Other products that can be manufactured from snail slime include soaps that are fortified with aloe vera plant that is effective against skin diseases, fertilizers, animal feed, among others. We have now our calcium, uh, which is extracted poorly direct from the shell. And this calcium is 100%, so it can be utilized in the reducing the acidity, it can be fortified with animal feeds, and more importantly, it can also be used in fish ponds, just to mention but a few. Apart from that, we have also this other product, that is the animal feed fortification, where we have mixed different components to come up with a highly nutritious protein that is also calcium fortified. I did mention about fertilizer. This is an organic fertilizer pro pro produced from the excretes, it also produced from the shells, and it's normally used to fortify the compost to make it a little bit more richer in terms of nutrients. The corresponding part of it is the liquid, 
where I explained before, can be generated by mixing two parts of the fecal material with one part of liquid and add a little bit of copper, which is actually acceptable under FAO, under sustainable agriculture. Ordinarily, we may not think of snails that much. Many a times, we may only notice their presence on the silver trail after them. But did you know that their meat is considered a good source of protein and zinc? As creepy as it may sound and just imagining it, making it on your plate, you may start considering it as part of your menu, given its nutritional value. In terms of nutrition, snail meat is very rich in iron. I, know I don't need to mention also the selenium component. And most importantly, it's very rich in protein. And being one of the major challenges in Africa, where protein is a major concern because of malnourishment, I think this is an area that, if tapped, will address this issue of malnutrition, especially under five, once and for all. Snail farming is also considered a solution in addressing matters of unemployment and food security. Within a very small area, you are harvesting so many snails. A kilo of snail currently goes at 1,500. The slime, if they were to supply to us, for us to process our product, is 1,200 per litre. Yet you need only 300 snails to produce one litre. The production capacity in terms of eggs is about 300 eggs per snail. And therefore, this is an area that if the government can support the young people through these normal funding programs, it will go ahead in addressing, one, unemployment, two, it will create those now job opportunity, it will provide food alternative through diversification to address food security, and more importantly, it will engage our youths so that they don't end up now doing other things that are harmful because they are busier and they are getting something extra. I call upon farmers across the country to join us. Come and learn, then you are facilitated. Go and farm the snails and address the food security issue in our country, thereby supporting our government in trying to address this menace once and for all, especially now that we are talking about hunger and drought. For people like Anne Mudeo, a research assistant at the institution, the opportunities that come with snail farming cannot be overlooked. And for her, spending the day studying these creatures only means that the silver trail they leave behind, the slime and the meat they produce, are worth their weight in gold. At first when I heard of snails, I think they are those yakish things. But when I, I noted that there is a difference between the snails and the thrugs and what commonly people know of are the thrugs and not the snails. Uh, in terms of income generation and also the products that are gotten from the snail are just but amazing. So, and there I noted that there is more scientific research that need to be done and, and I'm com compassionate about it looking forward to get into the research. I have already started engaging some people because it, uh, it's a cheap business to venture in. You need cheap, it's cheap to rear. Uh, you need raw cost of production and if the raw uh, cost of production is raw, definitely the pro profits get to be higher. So for those who are there, they, are, they have been discouraged by their farming techniques at home, maybe milk production and the rest due to continuous um, lives of economy. This is a good venture I can encourage, especially the youth. This is a venture I can call upon youth. We come and participate and not only the youth, even our mom and our dads there. It's a business that you'll do while you are doing other works because uh, mostly the snails are nocturnal, so they are active at night. You don't have to worry about that you have not fed them at, at the day, during the day. So at your convenient time in the evening, you can feed them and you are good to go. With the abundance of the giant African land snail in the country, Kenyans can only hope that the research that is in its formative stages will yield even better results upon further tests to determine its efficacy and help manufacture the syrup that will be a game changer in management of coughs.
as well as reduce the cost of importing the medicines. Gloria Milunos. Mm -hmm.